Hey everyone, welcome to week two of Advanced Econometrics. In this series of videos, we're gonna be talking about uh, the R programming language. We're gonna kind of go through an R tutorial to get you up to speed on using R for the rest of the course. Um, so just a reminder, last week we talked kind of broadly about structural estimation, which is gonna be kind of what this course is all about. Kind of talked about structural econometric models and laid the, the foundation for for kind of the, uh, the, the, the theory and, and the framework for the course. And, and now this week we're gonna do kind of the same for R, the, the, the software that we're gonna use to actually implement these kinds of structural models and structural estimation methods. So the plan for today is to talk through some, some resources that you might find useful as you're using R and trying to learn R. Then I'm gonna work through uh, kind of some, some bits and pieces about R that I think are particularly useful. Um, first talking about objects in R, uh, then talking about functions and packages in R, then uh, talking about doing just kind of basic, basic math and statistics in R, and then finally talking about data in R. After that, there are gonna be some slides on, on actually implementing R in kind of more real world examples, getting some practice with R. Not gonna have recorded videos for those. We're gonna talk about those in class them, themselves. Uh, in, in actual classes as opposed to in uh, recorded videos. Uh, there's no reading for this week per se, although uh, you should check out the uh, swirl, which I'll have a slide on that a little later in this first video, swirl interactive tutorials about R. Um, I actually recommend doing that before watching these videos other than this first one. So you can watch this first one. It'll have instructions for using swirl. Go use Swirl for a couple hours to try to uh, get yourself up and running with R, and then come back and watch the rest of this series of videos to kind of do an overview. Um, it, you could probably do it the other way and watch through all these videos and then do Swirl, but I think it'll work better if you, if you stop and do Swirl before getting into uh, my kind of main content on R. All right, so before I get into anything though, I do just wanna thank some people who have, uh, have other courses that are based on R that have made a lot of their course materials publicly available uh, that I've borrowed from in creating these. So Fiona Berlig, Grant McDermott, and Ed Rubin, thanks much for uh, providing all of your materials. Uh, and if you are looking for more R resources, they are definitely some folks you could, you could check out their course materials. Um, to, to, to see how to apply R in maybe some different, different contexts. Um, okay, we talked about this last week, but I just wanna remind you, we, we're talking about R. First thing you gotta do is actually install R. It's usually pretty straightforward. If you're coming from uh, Stata or MATLAB, it might be a little different because you actually have to install two different things. You have to install R and you have to install R Studio. R is going to be the the kind of underlying language, like the 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 structure that actually does the work. And R Studio is going to be the graphical user interface that you actually interact with. So I used this analogy last week. I think it works well. You can think of R, where you can download from from cran.rproject.org. Um, you can think of that as like the engine. That's the thing that's actually running your analysis. R Studio, which you can download from rstudio.com, is like the dashboard of your car. That's the thing that you are interacting with that then interacts with R to run things. So you'll interact with R Studio, um, and then R Studio will kind of interact with R to actually do things. Uh, so you do have to get. There are other ways you can do this, but this is what I highly recommend. And what that means is you just have to get R and R Studio both up and running. Um, but that should be, like I said, usually straightforward. They're, they're free, open source, um, should, be, uh, should be easy to do. Um, if you've used them before, I do recommend making sure you have the most up-to-date version of each. So that might mean uninstalling and reinstalling or just upgrading, whichever, whichever works better for you. Okay. Um, like I said, I think the best way to get up and running with R is, the, is using Swirl, which is this package, and we'll talk later on about what packages are, but for now, just take it as a given that a package is a thing in R. Swirl is a package that kind of interactively teaches you how to use R. 
And they have a website, swirlstats.com, that you can click on here um, if you've got the slides open to, to, to go to Swirl, where they, they have some slightly more in-depth instructions on how to use Swirl. But essentially, I have all the code right here that you need to actually use Swirl. So I recommend doing this, installing the Swirl package using the install.packages function, loading Swirl using the library function, and then using this install underscore course function to download three of these Swirl courses. And then you just type Swirl uh, with the parentheses. You're essentially calling Swirl as a function. We'll talk about that later on. But or you're calling Swirl, and it's going to pop up some text and start walking you through these interactive tutorials. I highly recommend doing that as soon as this video is over, if you haven't yet, um, and getting yourself up to speed with how R works. I think these three that I've, I've, I've specifically uh, put in here in the code, R programming, getting and cleaning data, and advanced R programming are going to get you all the main concepts that you're going to, the programming concepts, coding concepts that you're going to need for this course. I think there's a little bit of overlap between each of them, um, but I think it's probably, uh, so, so if you see that you're starting something that, that looks like it overlaps with something you've done, you can skip it or you can just work through it a, a second time. Um, probably doesn't hurt to reinforce something if it's important enough that it shows up multiple times. All right, you might find that's not enough, either as we're getting started now or uh, down the road, as we work through things, you might run into questions about how, what, what's R doing, or you just want to go a little more in depth on some topic. There are lots of resources out there. Because R is widely used, free, open source, there are tons of resources out there. Um, if you've got the slides open, each one of these bullet points is actually a link. So you can just uh, go ahead and, and open it up uh, right here from the slides. Uh, DataCamp has kind of a, a course that's an introduction to R that can be useful. Um, I think it'll probably go through a lot of the same stuff we're talking about in these videos and that Swirl talked you through, but um, it's there. Uh, R for Data Science is a book that's freely available online written by uh, Hadley Wickham, who's created a lot of the really great R functionality. Advanced R is another book that I think is also written by Hadley Wickham that has a lot of great functionality uh, going a little more in depth. And then here are some, uh, some different kind of slides and notes from, um, from those folks I mentioned early on, Ed Rubin, Fiona Berlig, and Grant McDermott, all kind of with slightly different courses uh, using R in different ways. But certainly if you want to see R used in, in a different, none of these courses are structural estimation. It's going to be more uh, kind of reduced form econometrics or, or data science applications. But those are going to be great places you can go to get uh, get some info on using R in those ways. I also just want to mention a couple of things that I see as really great complements to R. Um, this isn't about R per se, but just about kind of my workflow in general using R and creating and doing research. Um, one thing that you've maybe heard of is LaTeX. It is this kind of uh, typesetting system um, that a lot of people use for kind of technical and scientific documents. Uh, that's what I've used to create all of these slides. Um, that's what a lot of folks use to, to write papers in economics and in other kind of scientific uh, and technical fields. So um, I mentioned that because uh, there's this kind of R package called Knitter, Knit R, um, that is really great at integrating R code and output into LaTeX documents. So a couple slides ago, I had I had that that chunk of code for using uh, using Swirl, and you'll see in later videos I've got a lot of chunks of code in here. It's Knitter that is essentially allowing me to take R code and put it into a LaTeX document in a way that that looks nice. So if you're ever thinking about wanting to create documents that have R code in them maybe like your problem sets, um, it could be useful to think about using LaTeX and, and Knitter to do that. You don't have to. Um, there is a bit of a learning curve, but I think once you've put in the time to get over that curve, it can really make things more efficient than having like documents that you're copy and pasting between or something like that. The other thing I want to mention is Git, GitHub, and SmartGit, or those are at least what I use. Um, Git is a version control system. As you start 
uh, writing your own code and you know, kind of wanting to keep track of changes in that code, I highly recommend using Git. Um, it, it, just like what I just mentioned, it also has a bit of a learning curve, but I think it's gonna be really useful. It's especially good if you're, if you're collaborating on a research project with people. Um, you can each kind of work on your own, pull out your own pieces of the project, work on them, put them back together, keep track of who's done what, when it's happened, you can revert back to previous versions. Um, really great, I highly recommend it. Um, you do have to set up a hosting platform like GitHub, and then you also, you don't have to, but I would recommend getting some kind of a, a GUI client like Smart Git uh, to use, use Git. Um, tons of resources out there. If none of the words I'm saying make any sense to you, that's fine. You don't have to use Git. You don't have to use LaTeX and Knitter. Um, I just wanted to throw it out there as things that a lot of people use um, when they're when they're working on these kinds of these kinds of projects. Uh, you know, kind of real research projects. So that's all I've got for our resources. Next video, we're going to talk about objects in R. Um, before we do that, like I said, I, I really recommend checking out the the Swirl uh interactive tutorials uh, work through those and then come back and watch the rest of these videos and it'll be a nice uh kind of a nice refresher the rest of these videos will be